Okay, folks, today we're going to talk about all the news about GPT-5 available so far, including some very interesting rumors. So, Sam Altman has stated that GPT-5 will contain more parameters and be a significant upgrade over the current version. The company further states that GPT-5 will be a state-of-the-art language model with features that make it feel like you are communicating with a friend rather than a machine. We all know that despite its advancements, GPT-4 still faces certain limitations and challenges. These include issues related to bias in language generation, lack of real-world knowledge grounding, and occasional inaccuracies or inconsistencies in generated text. In short, the so-called AI hallucinations, but also actual drops in efficiency and quality of responses. Additionally, GPT's four computational requirements and resource-intensive training process pose challenges for deployment and scalability in certain contexts. This is what GPT-5 is trying to avoid in its training phase. Although GPT-4 is now capable of processing both text and images, OpenAI predicts that the most significant advancements will be in its reasoning ability. This means that the LLM system will be able to think more logically about the information that we feed it and draw conclusions beyond what it already knows. I guess GPT-5 will think outside the box to give you unique solutions. But what makes me wonder is how GPT-5 will come through on its promise to improve its intelligence. Sam Altman hints that GPT-5 will be better at predicting what you want and give you personalized answers. You know, while he was having a chat with Bill Gates, he casually mentioned how OpenAI is working to make GPT-4 better at being a smart human. This is because GPT-5 will now take a moment to realize what your question is before giving you an answer right away. You might have noticed that the previous versions of GPT gave an instant output the minute you clicked on send. But I guess this will not always happen with the new update. GPT-5 will try not to repeat its answer for questions that are similar, but want a different outlook. Going back to GPT-4, let's say it was not always so efficient, to be honest. And I was quite okay with it thinking that. After all, it is a machine. But when I got the same answer for like a thousand times, it got quite frustrating. That is exactly what GPT-5 is trying to avoid. I mean, I hope GPT-5 can come up with some better, unique solutions. Okay, that's my cue to talk about user personalization. You know, it seems that GPT-5 will be trying to offer more personalized information by remembering all the data that you feed it. In short, it looks like a function very similar to the one we saw recently called ChatGPT Memory, in which ChatGPT will probably be able to remember various conversations that have taken place without having to remember each time what we are talking about in different chats. Talking about remembering stuff, let's talk about the context window of GPT-5 for a moment. Now, GPT-4, in its turbo version, is currently working at 128,000 tokens at a time, about 100,000 words or 300 pages. GPT-5, interestingly, may now increase that total to 200,000 words, to handle lengthier data and text. This means that you can have long, in-depth conversations with GPT-5 and it will remember everything you said because of its large memory. This can be used to understand long, complex materials such as law documents, large computer codes, and even an entire conversation. I haven't mentioned GPT-4.5 in a while. So, OpenAI actually rolled out a secret model they said was a majorly improved GPT-4 Turbo model, available now in the API. OpenAI has been secretly updating their models. Well, I, I wouldn't say secretly, but they've been continually updating their models again and again to give us GPT-4.5. So, for those who are excited about ChatGPT 4.5, you might be in for a disappointment because what we've got right now is GPT-4.5 in its initial phase. I guess OpenAI is going to leap forward with GPT-5 instead. I think that this model is an actual improvement in terms of accuracy and output, and I feel that OpenAI is not giving us everything at once. But of course, we know that GPT-5 is coming, so a lot of people right now, when they see this, they're not really that hyped up. Considering the advancements that we could have with GPT-5, I figured they could be right. 
Now, let's talk about another stunning upgrade in the multimodality area. It would have the understanding to communicate through different types of data, including text, photos, and even videos. For example, if you send a picture or a video to GPT-5, it will understand much, much more efficiently what elements will be within the image or video. This will result in greater efficiency if, for example, you ask GPT-5 to analyze an image and write a text about it, or perhaps analyze a work of art and have it teach you, step by step, how best to reproduce it or perhaps analyze the style of a competitor of your company to understand what works and what does not. And if that wasn't enough, GPT-5 is also predicted to understand and compose music for music enthusiasts out there. I really think this move towards multimodality would make GPT-5 more flexible and capable of providing better assistance. GPT-5 can also quickly produce a design based on an idea for an assignment you're working on. On the other hand, it can help you understand a video in a language you cannot speak by analyzing the voice and the substance of the film. Now, the vision capabilities of GPT-5 may be the next significant advancement to look forward to. This implies that GPT-5 could improve significantly in terms of understanding visual media as opposed to merely text. Currently, AI can recognize images in a similar way to how you can recognize a dog when you see one. But with GPT-5, it's expected that this capability will improve. Consider that it recognizes the dog in the picture and understands the situation, including whether the animal is pursuing a toy or is just lounging about looking cute. That's pretty detailed. But okay, let's talk efficiency, folks. Now, similar to how a quicker reaction time improves human agility, a quicker inference speed improves AI's efficiency and responsiveness. Inference speed is the rate at which an AI system can comprehend, evaluate, and generate an output from input data. GPT-5 is obviously expected to function significantly more quickly than its predecessors. This should make GPT-5 more effective for tasks requiring quick turnaround times because it can process and respond to queries nearly instantaneously with precise outcomes. The faster inference speed of GPT-5, for instance, would lead to a shorter lag time between spoken words and translation if it were used to translate a conversation in real time. Now, let's explore a domain where GPT-5 surpasses its predecessor in remarkable ways. Coding capabilities. While GPT-4 had limited proficiency in handling coding tasks, GPT-5 will emerge as a proficient coder in its own right. Unlike GPT-4, which struggled with complex code structures and debugging, it seems like GPT-5 navigates through intricate programming challenges with ease. Something else that we can hopefully also expect from GPT-5 is its ability to produce bias-free content. As you might know, ChatGPT has often been accused of being a little too politically correct. So I guess OpenAI has started working to solve this. However, biased data will most likely lead to an AI system that reinforces its prejudices because AI systems are only as objective as the data they are trained on. There is a drive to guarantee that GPT-5 is taught and used in an unbiased and morally sound way. This means taking steps to ensure that the diverse and representative set of data needed to train GPT-5 is added to the LLM. It also means setting up procedures to find and fix biases in the output that GPT-5 generates in its training phase. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this exact moment, the release date of ChatGPT-5. While the company has not let the release date slip, we can expect GPT-5 to be here as soon as summer. Well, that's in the Northern Hemisphere. Winter for you guys in the South. Okay, folks, if you made it this far, drop a GPT in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next AI news. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.